Hi everyone, my name is Anton and this video is a part of my Jekyll video series. In this video I wanted to talk about the blog posts and what we can do with them. But as I started to prepare for this video, I realized it would be a good idea if we could take a look at the formats that Jekyll understands. Because this is what you are going to be doing the most once you will finish developing your website, and all that you will want to be doing is publishing the content and this is where these formats will come in handy. In this video we will have a brief look at markdown and textile formats. We also will edit the config yaml file to customize our website. First let's edit the config yaml file. We can start by editing the title and the description. At this point we don't need to worry about the email address or other fields, but we can specify the base URL. Once we are done, let's take a look at the file formats. As you remember, we moved the posts folder to a blog directory. As you can see, the current blog post is in a markdown format. We mentioned earlier that Jekyll supports HTML, markdown and textile formats. If you are watching this video and you are unfamiliar with HTML, I strongly recommend you to pause it right here and come back once you will have a basic understanding of what HTML is. Markdown and textile are both markup languages. They are easier to write, read and edit from a human perspective. Let's take a quick look at the syntax of both by creating a blog post using each format. Markdown can have both file extension full.markdown and short.md. Let's copy the content of our already existing post, delete the content and edit the YAML settings so it will appear within the other blog posts. When saving the file, don't forget that Jekyll requires you to use the specific file name structure as year hyphen month hyphen date hyphen title dot extension. Let's call ours my custom markdown post dot md. Now we can write the content in markdown syntax. Here we will only look at the basic and most used features and the first one is headers. To write a header all you have to do is put a hash sign in front of your header separated by a space and an empty line after. One hash sign will create an h1 tag, two hash signs will create h2 tag, three hash signs will create an h3 tag and so on. Paragraphs will be generated if you leave a blank line on the top and the bottom of your text. To make your text italic you will have to put stars around it or double stars to make it bold. To create a link all you'll have to do is to wrap the text that you want to appear as a link in the square brackets and the link URL in the round brackets right after it. Make sure that you don't have a space between them. To create bullet lists we only need to put a star in front of each list item if you want to have an image. You have to put the explanation point followed by square brackets with alternative text followed by round brackets with a path to an image. It is important to note that Markdown does not support image dimensions, so if you have to use it, you can write using an HTML image tag. Now let's quickly grab an image that I have on my desktop and place it in the folder that we stated in our post. Let's take a look in the browser and see that our new post is published. We can see different headings, a paragraph, bold and italic words, a link, a list and an image. Let's do the same job with textile. Here the syntax is a little different and to get a tag we want all we have to do is to type name of the tag with a dot at the end with tag content separated with a space. Make sure that you have an empty line separating your tags. Headings are really simple in textile. All we have to do is to write h1 dot space and write the content of your h1. Same goes for h2, h3 and so on. You get the idea. For paragraphs we also just put p dot space and the content of your paragraph. If you want your text to appear bold you have to wrap it with double star characters or you can wrap it in double underline signs to appear italic. If you want to create a link you need to wrap the text that you want to link to something in double quotes followed by colon and the URL that you want it to link to. To create a list, same as markdown, we only need to put stars in front of each list item. Same as markdown, textile does not support image dimensions and also has a fairly simple syntax. You have to surround the image path with explanation points and you can include the alternative text inside the round brackets before the second explanation point. Now we can save the file and see the result in the browser. And to our surprise we can see that the new blog post is not there. 
The reason for it is that we are missing red cloth on our machine. Red cloth is a model for using the textile markup language in Ruby. When installing it, make sure that you have RNC in the uppercase. Then wait for the installation to complete and restart jQuery. Now we can see our new post that we have just wrote using textile language. Same as in the previous example, we did not have to write a single HTML tag for this post. Now we know how to create content using Markdown or textile formats. If you are interested in other features that Markdown and Textile offer you, I will leave the links to documentations below. Using these languages can reduce the time you will need to spend to create content on your site in the future. If you found this video useful, you can like this video or leave a comment to let me know about it. My name is Anton and see you next time.